Good morning and warm welcome to all uh, to our first session of the day. Today we have with us Dr. Mohammad Ashraf, sir is from Material Science and Environment uh, Division, Fishing Technology, uh, Fishing Technology Division, ICR Center Institute of Fishery Technology. And today our guest has chosen a topic for deliberation that is nanotechnology and its applications in fisheries. Uh, sir is from ICR CFT uh, Kashmir University program uh, from May 19, 2022. Uh, sir, uh, you're audible as well as visible, and your presentation is also visible. Please start, sir. Good morning to all. Yes, thanks for the introduction. Uh, my name is Muhammad Ashraf, and I belong to the materials and uh, environment section of uh, the Fishing Technology Division. And generally, we work on the nanomaterials <laughs> and its application in uh, fisheries and aquaculture. And I will talk uh, briefly about uh, this. Now, what is the history of that nanomaterial classification and its application? And we have. I will talk about two case studies of uh, research we have recently carried out in Central Institute of Fisheries Technology. And one is anti-fouling strategies. The other one is the nanocarbon dots and its products from fish weights. And then I will conclude that. And then. To begin with, uh, the, we know that the Industrial Revolution was happened in 1870, 82, 1840. The earlier was steam engine, then steel industry has come, shipping, railways, and all in the 1900s. And during 19, 1900 to 1950, it comes automobiles, electrical engineering, all those things that engineering aspects were developed. And in the 1950s, the semiconductor was developed. Then uh, it comes to the development of computers and electronics, all TVs, all those things, and then chemical synthesis, all those comes in the 1950s. And then now, 1980s, the introduction of nanotechnology and molecular manufacturing, molecular biotechnology, all those things, all the aspects that came out. And recently, we are in the nanotechnology era. And uh, what is the nanotechnology? It is uh, we are coming up everyday life. And it was the term was introduced by Professor Taniguchi in 1974 during a conference in Japan Society of Precision Engineering. According to you, 2007, the term technology means is a domain of scientific activity oriented on science synthesis, investigation, application of devices and materials, technical systems whose functioning is determined by nanostructures. Generally, a typical nanoparticle comes into one to hundred. And uh, earlier in 1950s, uh, the Nobel Prize uh, winner of Dr. Professor Feynman to, uh, in a lecture show, uh, indicated that there is a plenty of room at the bottom. And uh, later he pointed out that when we have some control over these small arrangement things so on a small scale, we will get enormously greater range of possible properties that substances can have and the different things what we can do. The problems of chemistry and biology can be solved by coming out to the atomic level of the particles. So nanotechnology is a 1 billionth of a meter in a diameter of the nanometer sized particles. The principle of nanotechnology is that materials with non-properties and functions Generally, the material is same properties. For example, copper oxide is having the same property. If you bring it down to the smaller size, it can be used for different other functions and due to its nano size and, nano size and its uh, introduction of higher particles, uh, higher surface area to the environment. In short, the nanotechnology refers to a, that 1 to 100 nanometer size. This is the generally the particle size of different materials, water, glucose, antibody, bacteria, all those you can see. 
Now the liposomes, dendrimide, gold nanoshells, quantum dots, fullerenes, all those things were coming into this picture one to uh, 10 raised to nanometers. Then generally, what is nanotechnology? What is the, I will make it in a simple way. That is that if you take a one square meter of, one square centimeter of a sugar cube, we know that the area of exposed area is six square centimeters. Is it not? Then the same sugar poop, you make it to two. That is, you cut it in the 0.5 centimeter, uh, one side and the other one. Then you make it to two. Then the area of uh, available for a reaction is called eight square centimeters. Is it not? Then that means it is 33 percent increase of the area. Then again, you cut it to four pieces. That is 0.5 centimeters cube and what this one then uh, the total area exposed to the environment is 10 square centimeter similarly if you crush the sugar particle that one square cube thousands of particles will be there you can imagine that how much uh, area is exposed to the environment exposed to the environment reaction for example if you take a sugar cubes for then you put it in that it will take a lot of time to dissolve it but if you take very crushed, very fine sugar, you put it in uh, water, what will happen? You can find uh, immediately it will dissolve and you can find some water droplets outside the glass because it is thermo thermal reactions. So that is what it is. Similarly, if you are introducing a nano, nano sized particle, you will get a lot of area is exposed to the sub, uh, reaction. Apart from that, you are getting an area of, uh, you are getting the reaction is done and you will you need to use very small size of particle instead of bigger uh, uh, amount so what is the classification of there are different seventh international conference of nanostructured material recommended the following classification nanoparticles nanoporous structures nanotubes and nanofibers nanodispersions nanostructured surfaces and films and nanocrystals and clusters and then uh, we know that uh, the carbon is uh, one of the uh, major material used for nanoparticles apart from the inorganics so the fullerene was first discovered in 1985 and there is a big molecule composed of pentagon hexagons like that this is the shape it is the c60 molecule and and then carbon nanotubes were introduced by sumio lijima and it is carbon nanotubes where the single uh, or multi-layered and structures and they can be opened and closed and the CMT lid of half fluorine, just like CMT half fluorine, you have seen the diameter of the carbon nanotubes will be very 0.5 nanometers to 100 nanometers in the case of multi layered structures. So, if you are a nanomaterial, what are the nanomaterial analysis? What are the equipments we can use for uh, characterization? One is STEM, scanning electron microscopes, or STM, and then near field optical microscopes, X ray diffraction, atomic force microscopes. FT Raman spectroscopy, UV symbol spectrophotometers, and particle analyzer and CETA potential, etc. These are some of the equipment we generally use for the characterization of the equipments. And what is what are the generally I will talk about the, what are the simple applications, general applications of uh, nanotechnology. One is the main major is food. That fortified uh, food, uh, we are all talking about this uh, fortified food and fortified food products. We can use it for that functional uh, development of functional food natural and rich beneficial components will be there it improves if you are putting nanomaterial the reaction will be high and uh, it will absorb very fast to the system and nutrient delivery or nanotechnology can be used nanotechnology nanomaterials used for preparation of nanocomposites nano emulsions nanofibers nano laminates and apart from, apart from that we can put it in a encapsulate nanomaterials uh, encapsulation of uh, some uh, material in nanomaterials in a different way and and it can act as a biologically active substances. And then uh, you can use it. Another aspect is uh, delivery systems. And then nano encapsulation systems of bioactivity. These are all the four five different types of uh, nano encapsulations. And this is the overall the food processing system. What, what are the food science and technology, the applications of nanomaterials and it's uh, uh, it can be heat more transfer, nanoscale, nano, which is under processing, nanobiotechnology can use molecular synthesis, delivery, formulation, nano sensors, nano tracers. All these, these are all the major applications. And these are the four divided into four types for a thin material products, 
and by these are all the major applications under food processing industry and then uh, it is under coming to the material science it is uh, generally we will prepare nano materials of this is some of the minor summary summary oxide structure we have prepared in our laboratory and cerium oxide titanium dioxide these are these are the some structures of different uh, nano materials and then uh, in our uh, yeah, my area of research mainly on anti corrosion anti fouling strategies developments so the corrosion is one of the major uh, issue among the fishermen and among the fishing industry among the fishing industry and among the users of different uh, um area for example hook if you are taking a hook fishing hook it will undergo degradation if it is a, a sinker it will undergo degradation because of the corrosion so these are all the major issues so we have to develop some type of uh, coatings so uh, i will talk about the coating about now tesla developed a carbon nanotubes based coating it can stretch without breaking and two coats rather than three with many additional anti corrosion paints these are all some of the developments in the international level nano wear another technology is nano clear coating it that is advantage is it is very strong and it is uh, very clear and low amount what is the, one of the major advantage of these amount these of material is you need to use very low amount instead of using bigger uh, uh, higher quantities bigger gram quantities you need only milligram quantities so one of our work is uh, nano zinc oxide cerium oxide reinforced phosphate coating on both still showed a good corrosion inhibition this is one of our work recently presented in a, a nase conference in japan and apart from that we boat building steel we are also developed a type of nano coating based on ferric oxide cerium oxide zinc oxide mixture coating and then uh, it is applied over steel showed a 40% reduction in corrosion resistance but still it is we see some of the improvements and another uh, thing is nano material coated fishing hooks also will give provide a smooth hooking system and then anti fouling coating in fishing boards also have one of the major issue and uh, generally it is having lot of problems fowler like barnacle and other wildlife attach themselves to the hulls that is the major issue when it is um, a material exposed to the marine environments nano technology could also help to solve this issue by providing a surface which can uh, inhibit the attachment of or for um, uh, microbials or uh, biofilms or uh, even uh, organisms microorganisms so what is the major issue is the major challenge is it these are the core whenever we develop a coating it should uh, withstand the ocean current forces different type of forces exposed uh, exposed when the material is exposed in the marine environments and the scratch scratches abrasion from harbors and then uh, and also finally the fisherman 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 community can use it only if it is cost effective and then um, regarding fuel emission also the nano materials were exp extensively used to remove sulfur from fuel oil nano carbon like carbon nano dots car carbon um, nano tubes were used as a filter adsorbent and molecular levels so and another is a uh, material is uh, the nano composites for boat building just it is there all the application just i am talking about the recently the sandwich design of polyvinyl chloride core carbon fiber and vinyl laminates were developed and it is 50% lighter than the equivalent strength and lighter than lighter and the equivalent to as the strength of steel so that means it is it should be low cost fuel efficient and technology is under still under experimental stage and then uh, in our laboratory we are mainly used for wood preservation carbon um, copper chromium arsenic is mainly used for the preservation of wood so what it is an in gram level actually or it is in percentage level if you use the same material if you are using in a uh, nano material we need to use very small amount and the same effects we will we will experience it. we are working on that also these are the, the the pictures you can see the nano copper oxide treated coconut wood and we found that it is uh, uh some uh, resistance in the biodegradation in the marine environments and then uh, development of nano sensors uh, we have done one work on the nano sensor development of uh, uh, that uh, uh, trimethylamine tma dma detection by using calixarin functionalized with carbon nanotube as a sensor and it we could find that it is a 1 ppm it can analyze 1 p down to 1 ppm concentration and then uh, i will talk about the case study one of the development of anti fouling strategy in a 
Aquaculture is one of the major area developing in India, and this is one of the major issue among the fishermen is among the aquaculture farmers is the biofouling. But when it is exposed to the marine environments or exterior environments, immediately it will form a bio uh, form bio macromolecules, biological macromolecules attached over that, and it comes proteins like and polysaccharides, bacteria, diatoms, and then it will form a biofilm. This biofilm will uh, invite uh, most of the spores of the other organisms and settlement of micro, macro, micro, and microorganisms, and like barnacle, etc. So it will become a fouling. And after some time, the meshes were uh, meshes or uh, lumens were closed because of the, or uh, and it will it will prevent the uh, transportation of uh, water or passage of water from the cages to the uh, water body, and then or and circ water circulation and then uh, accumulation of lot of food particles that will enhance increase enhance the bacterial load in the and then it will affect the growth of the fish so these are all one of the major issues in the aquaculture system and earlier and all we are uh, developing um, we are talking about the copper oxide as a, one of the best uh, anti fouling agents or uh, tributyl tin oxide still it is, uh, these are silicons or uh, so many Materials were available in the market, but what is the major issue with uh, the polyethylene is uh, uh, one of the major issue is polyethylene. Uh, polyethylene the uh, nets the is uh, very inert. It is highly non-polar. So we cannot apply most of the anti-fouling strategies over the aquaculture cage nets. And uh, what is the general method the fishermen will do? They will uh, occasionally they will take out and they will use different type brushing and they will make clear out all uh, uh, biofouling organisms from the net. Or in uh, in uh, country in countries like Philippines and they have got motorized scrubbers. They will use it for that cleaning and everything. So and uh, overall, the 25 percent of the total expenditure. Of the aquaculture cage, uh, man, cage manage cage system will goes to the biofouling management. So, in view of that, we have uh, this is some of the pictures seen in Philippines. And then, uh, we what we thought is that we have to this uh, polyethylene high density polyethylene based uh, materials used used for the construction of uh, aquaculture cages cage nets. And it is highly uh, non-polar, and we cannot apply any type of uh, anti-fouling or, or anti-fouling methodologies over the net. So we have to make a surface which can accommodate the biocides over the net. So what we have to do is we have to modify the surface. It is a, one of the important challenge. What we have done is we have modified the surface of the polyethylene nets. By using another conducting material, it is called polyaniline. It is a well-known conducting polymer, and it is easy and it is cheaper also. So what we have done is we have uh, made a methodology to change the surface of the net by using polyaniline, and we have modified the surface. And then over this polyaniline is a conducting polymer. We can easily incorporate our uh, nano copper oxide material, nano copper oxide, or any other biocides over that. So we have done it that in situ polymerization. So we have uh, incorporated nano copper oxide, and we found that uh, this incorporated nano. This is the met met materials and methods we have used for that. And then what we have seen that the nano polyaniline was very nicely accommodated over the net. And it can be ready for the direct application of nano copper oxide. So a net with the polyaniline, you can see here A1, and then eventually the polyethylene, polyaniline plus nano copper oxide was in the A3. You can see in the picture. And this this uh, published this was published in the uh, 2020. And uh, we can see we have taken the scanning electron microscope of uh, image uh, images of the this treated material. We can you could see. A lot of polyaniline nano rods were formed over the polyethylene net, and then um, uh, after treated with the nano copper oxide, you can see a lot of uh, small islands of nano copper oxide. And then the same we have uh, analyzed through atomic force microscope. You can see that it is uh, these materials were incorporated in the polyethylene net. 
and uh, when we expose to the field uh, field system we can see the poly um, of 15 days of exposure you can see this one after uh, 90 days of exposure in the marine, marine environments the 0.02 percentage of nano copper oxide treated uh, polyethylene nets were completely um, uh, excellent biofouling resistance compared to the control we can see the control here and this is the tree, uh, polyethylene treated one and this is uh, one uh, concentration, the second concentration. You can see the clear difference. And then uh, this, uh, after the success of this, uh, this one, we have tried uh, the multi-location studies. We have kept uh, the poly, the treated material in the Vishagbatnam C, Vizag C for uh, five months. And these are the results. You can see untreated control has got a lot of falling organisms. And uh, this, uh, treated one as a very limited number of and it is highly efficient and apart from that another place near to one freshwater system we are out there also we have seen the similar it is only one month we have kept and you could find a lot of algal uh, accumulation over this and here we will be finding very little numbers then then we have uh, prepared a cage Cage with uh, treated nano, treated material, treated material of net and uh, control in a, and it is exposed in the near, uh, it is in Trivandrum, and as our sister institute location, this country, it's a CMFRA location at Vidinium. Uh, and we have made a cage, and in that we have kept uh, 50 numbers of uh, Lithrana species of fish and uh, we uh, similar time we have uh, made a uh, 50 numbers in the hatchery also just to compare not like that hmm? and what we have found the economic valuation found that 6000 needed see, rupees 6000 needed to treat the 12 square meter of a cage and these are all the arrangements while we are installing the net in the then you can see the underwater images of the control and the treated one and these are all the, after taking out, these are all the situation. The control was here and this uh, treated one. And this, uh, we, uh, this is just, it is a comparison. It is not a experimentally, it is not right. It is a hatchery reared one and cage cultured uh, fish. As you can see, this was the quality was very good. And, uh, and we analyzed uh, the cage cultured fish, uh, fish weight, based on fish weight, fish length, all, all was uh, up to the standard, uh, reported literatures and then apart from that we have fish tissue we analyzed to the copper concentration and gut and brain all you can see it is not much uh, influence on the treated it and also we have uh, seen that 90 species uh, around the net what are the species of uh, attached what are the species of uh, biofollowers attached over the net and then we found that around uh, comparison 90 species of fun uh, species were found in untreated net and the 11 were in the treated nets. And one of the major uh, observation was calcareous followers were comparatively less in the uh, treated one. And these are all the other organisms we found in the net. There, there are parrot fishes were there, puffer fishes were These are all, they have entered in the net uh, cages and we have taken out while uh, removing the cage. These are all the concentration. And is all very within the standard limit or within the prescribed limit. We found that any extra in that. And uh, copper toxicity studies, we also carried out a small study in the laboratory. It is a student's work. And it is just a bioaccumulation of copper in tissues, bioaccumulation of gut. And then uh, bio, this bioaccumulation of copper in gill. And we have found that it is uh, because we are here, we are using very high amount of uh, uh, nanomaterial. So the, based on based on that concentration we found that it is there is an increase but as such it is not much accumulation only accumulation gill was increased with increasing concentration other places it is not that because we are using the, they are living in an environment of high concentrated uh, copper and nano copper oxide treat, um, water and then uh, what is the leaching you, you all talk about the lab what is the leaching what we have seen that initial when we insert the uh, net in the water Immediately, you can find that um, there is a highest 155 ppm 
of uh, copper was released because actually what this uh, material was and then after later we found that it is going to 8 ppm level in the lychee so it is very low level compared to the amount of uh, copper oxide copper present in the aquatic system you have carried one month uh, level and uh, and in this conclusion what we can say that uh, we, we can, uh, this system can be used for uh, preventing biofouling in aquaculture state, aquaculture system. And uh, we have given, we have, still we are trying to introduce uh, the uh, treated nets. We have supplied some of the farmers and uh, some failure were there and some uh, still it is going on. And then another second case study is we have done a work on the development of uh, utilization of fish waste for the development of nano materials one of the material we are all talking about the nano uh, nano carbon dot nano graphene all those things and another new material is called carbon dots this carbon dots is uh, a a molecule which contain uh, conjugated uh, conjugated alkenes and uh, it contains a lot of uh, hydroxyls amines or like that different molecules different functional groups were attached over that and this will give a fluorescent color also what we have done is uh, generally fish scale we are used for fish scale is uh, rich in uh, collagen and then uh, uh, hydroxyapatite so what uh, the fish scale is a wonderful material it is a wonderful creation of god actually it is a it contains comprise of osseous transition and matrix these are the three layers present in the fish uh, scale so outermost osseous layer consists of hydroxyapatite and then coll collagen is protein arranged in two or three plywood like structures and these material why whenever we are extracting hydroxyapatite the procedure for extracting hydroxyapatite from the fish scale is uh, we are it is a highly acid environment or alkaline environment what will happen is uh, only hydroxyapatite will get you will lose collagen otherwise if you are uh, Thinking of extracting other one, you will lose uh, uh, that uh, other um, fractions like hydroxy, part of hydroxy appetite and then uh, calcium derivatives like that. So what we thought that we can use hydro hydrothermal reaction. We can extract, uh, utilize this collagen into a carbon dot. It is a nanomaterial and then hydroxy appetite. Also, it will be extracted in a nano form. So we um, standardized a procedure for extracting nano carbon dot and hydroxy appetite and then beta hydroxy cal beta dihydroxy calcium carbonate also and then uh, we have it, the nano carbon dots with the fluorescent carbon uh, fluorescent material and it is uh, successfully synthesized from earlier workers with crab shells kito, even me also prepared from kytosan and uh, natural fruits and vegetables and this uh, carbon dots can be used as sensors, cell imagers, corrosion inhibitor, nano carriers, etc. And these are the methodology we are following. The fish scale we have treated with acetic acid, and then um, we are getting a carbon dot, uh, carbon dot plus a calcium organic plus one residue will be the case a calcium organic complex residue. That residue we have cindered to thousand degrees centigrade, and then we will get a pure white hydroxyapatite. If you are extracting through hydroxyapatite directly from the scale, what you have what you have seen is a little bit color is a little off white, but here what you are getting is uh, hydroxyapatite with a very pure white, and uh, it is um, better than our uh, synthetic uh, additives. So about again, this uh, there is a uh, hydroxy uh, sorry carbon dots containing the a soluble portion it is called uh, dicalcium di dicalcium hydrogen phosphate this dicalcium phosphate also is soluble in uh, along with the water so what you have to do is we have to extract carbon dot from the uh, carbon dot solution then we are getting a uh, precipitate that precipitate you heat to 1000 degrees centigrade will get dicalcium diphosphate pure and then residue is a pure cd these are the procedure we are generally for we have standardized for the material and extraction of uh, uh, high value material from the fish scale and then this uh, this is the carbon dot one of the characterization of the carbon dot 
what is uh, the collagen protein peptides and these are all the major material percent in the uh, fish scale so this is uh, analyzed through uh, generally first initially whenever we are getting a material we will analyze through that uh, spectrophotometrically we are getting two peaks one is called uh, 200 one is at 235 uh, 216 the second one is at uh, 260 or 70 pages uh, 70 nanometers what does it mean this uh, 260 means it because of the presence of pi to pi star transition from the conjugated system and the second one is called the functional groups present in the uh, carbon dot these are all the two groups this um, pi pi star transition is mainly responsible for this is the color of this one responsible for this type of fluorescence and then what is the morphology of that you can see that it is purely it is a uh, term image you can see this is the image of the four to nine four to five nanometer size and then you can see this uh, spectrograph you can if it is an inorganic material present in the system you will get a lot of dots over that here you can see only electron cloud of this uh, carbon dots implies that it's purely an organic nanomaterial which can be used access which can be used for different purposes instead of inorganics so this is the AFM topography of the material and this is the nano then first i'm coming to the again i'm coming to the nano hydroxyapatite this is the hydroxyapatite and you can see this uh, comparative evaluation of uh, uh, different stages you can see this uh, this is the hydroxyapatite is pure white and it absorbs 280 235 335 384 486 these are all the wavelengths uh, absorption of uh, hydroxyapatite and then uh, we have analyzed uh, FTIR spectra also I'm not talking about that the another uh, aspect is beta dicalcium diphosphate and this is the this is also one of the filler material can be used as a filler material in dental implantations upon, along with uh, the hydroxyapatite this also this is the XRD spectra of this uh, beta dicalcium diphosphate and then uh, you can see the different characteristics of uh, beta dicalcium phosphate. It is only. And then, what is the real, real mechanism is undergoing when we are treating with the hydro, hydro fish scale with uh, uh, acetic acid? When we introduce acetic acid in the hydrothermal reactor, what will happen is hydro, hydro acetic acid selectively reacts with the calcium derivatives. For example, it is a, this interlink between calcium interlink is there, collagen interlink interlink is there, then hydroxyapatite is there. The calcium interlink first they will cut off, they will break it up, then it will become a um, unstable, and then uh, we can uh, this uh, undergo this collagen will undergo various reaction due to the uh, closed uh, vessel reactions because of that uh, this. Uh, all collagen and peptides and proteins can undergo um, uh, different types of uh, molecular reorientations and then will become carbon dots and then the hydroxyapatite separated as good crystals and that you can see the beta dicalcium phosphate then dicalcium phosphate is um, coming out along with the water along with the carbon dots so that you have to extract this again And then uh, we have prepared, uh, what is the advantage, we can prepare carbon dot hydroxyapatite composite and it is, uh, if we are getting a light brown fine powder and this can be, what we are thought is we can use it for uh, different purposes, the application is in process. And these are some total summary of the flowchart. And uh, before concluding, what are the major issue is the ethical legal ramifications of nanotechnology is primed in public considerations. The greater the awareness and understanding of the nanotechnology among the society is essential for safe application and reaping the benefit. As it is an important major technology we can apply for agriculture, fisheries and all other purposes. And then society must be more informed about the advantages and disadvantages of nanotechnology through public deliberations, discussions and suitable decision by the public and governments for brighter tomorrow. Thank you. Hope you understood things. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Participants, if you have any questions or queries, please ask the sir, or you can write down in the chat. You can interact with sir as well.
Your microphones are turned on. Yeah, please ask questions. You have raised your hand if you have any questions. Okay, I think no more yes, questions. Yes, Vijay, you have raised it to your hand. If you have any questions, please ask the sir. Okay. Maya Raman has asked one question in chat. Yeah, in general, sure. does nano applications have any negative effects? Currently, we found that there is there will be some negative effects, but it is... Uh, how you are adapting the system instead of instead of using micrograms uh, for a treatment it is you no know, it is i can say it is safe if you are using uh, bulk levels you you are not supposed to use that because whenever your research or your uh, product development should be concentrated and the most lowest level of uh, concentration instead of going for uh, milligram to you can so microgram level material is sufficient for getting a specific reaction or specific um, of the objective of prevention of microbial attraction or whatever it is so you need not use uh, more amount it's actually even uh, we can, you have whenever you are thinking of application of nanomaterial you have to think at point not not five not point five point one like that point not not five grams that is 5 milligram. You start with 0 0.5 milligrams, 0 0.5 5 milligrams, and then you can start with work, work. instead of uh, starting with uh, more concentrations. So you can find uh, only thing is you have to ensure that uh, the material is very nano sized and it is having uniform coating or uniform application in the material. So you definitely it will work. One more question in the chat, sir. Uh uh, okay. There is, uh, apart from next, is there any uh, more application of nanotechnology in aquaculture? At present, we have done a work on uh, aquaculture cage nets. We are still, uh, uh, we don't know what type of work we can go. Actually, I am, my, our mandate is with uh, the same, I am working mainly on biodegeneration. So, if uh, we have not started any work on other materials, but uh, aquaculture cage net also, we need to go a lot for uh, improved uh, improving the technology actually it is some research i have seen that they are using feed um, incorporation nanomaterials all those things so you can use it any other question or query you may turn on your microphones or direct it uh, via chat mm -hmm. Mostly uh, thank yous are coming. Dr. Maya Raman uh, is saying thank you, sir. Uh, okay, thank you. Any other interaction from all the people uh, here? We have if any. Okay, if you need any queries or interested, you can uh, you can send it to by by mail. It's no problem. I'll reply. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Shall I close? Uh, Maji, sir. Sir, thank you on behalf of NAD cell. Thank you on behalf of the participants. Mm. Uh, thanks once again. We really wish you in coming sessions. We want to hear you again. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. We all. may leave now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.